Chapter 2, The Header, The Preaching of Zenos. Laban rejects the preaching of Zenos and Zenoch and demands their death. Lehi stands forth and pleads with Laban, the chief high priest, and testifies against the church of God. 1. And it came to pass that after Zenoch had ended his exhortation and preaching unto the leaders of the Jews, Zenos stood forth and began to expound further upon the things which Zenoch had said concerning the coming of the Son of God to the world and the destruction of the Jews. 2. And I, Mormon, cannot write all the words that the prophet Zenoch and Zenos preached unto the Jews at Jerusalem. For they did truly speak many things unto the Jews, and many things did they also speak unto the leaders of the Jews. And Nephi hath recorded upon his record all of the words that Zenos and Zenoch spake according to the memory of his father Lehi, who was present when they stood before the high priests at Jerusalem. 3. And the words of these two prophets are great and wonderful, and have been preserved for the generations of the sons and daughters of Lehi, and their descendants, and also for all those who shall receive this record in the last days. But a portion of their words I have been commanded by the Lord to include in my abridgment of the plates of Nephi, which plates I have before me. 4. And all of the words and prophecies that are recorded upon these plates of Nephi, none are as great as those that were spoken by Zenoch and Zenos. 5. And it came to pass that Zenos also stood forth boldly, and spake unto the high priests, which were assembled before him. And Zenos expounded unto them a parable of an olive tree, and likened the house of Israel unto this olive tree. 6. And this he did, that he might show unto the Jews that which was to befall them if they continued in their wicked ways, and continued to deny the gospel of the Son of God. 7. And it came to pass that Zenos likened the children of Israel unto a tame olive tree, that the Lord nourished in his vineyard, or in other words, in the land of promise. And this he meant so that it might be understood that the Lord had blessed the house of Israel, and had given them the land in which they dwelt, and had driven out their enemies, and sent his spirit to dwell among them. 8. And the tree became corrupt, and began to decay. And the Lord commanded his servants, who were the prophets of God, to go into the vineyard, and attempt to nourish the olive tree, and bring back the good fruit thereof. 9. And he commanded his servants to prune it, and dig about it, and nourish it for a time to see if it would once again bring forth its natural fruit. 10. And Zenos prophesied in the parable about the destruction of the Jews, and that the Lord shall withdraw the righteous from among them, and send them to other parts of the world where they would not be destroyed. This he would do to preserve unto himself the roots of the tree, or in other words, the true gospel of the Son of God. 11. And these things had reference to the children of Lehi, and other people whom the Lord would lead out of the land of Israel before its destruction by its enemies. 12. And the parable spoke of the restoration of the gospel among the Jews, at the time of the coming of the Lord into the world. Nevertheless, because the trees of the vineyard are so corrupt, the Lord commands his servants to graft in the wild olive branches in hopes that he might preserve the good fruit of the tree unto himself. And the wild olive branches are the Gentiles, who shall have the gospel preached unto them by the servants of God. 13. And it came to pass that after the gospel is preached unto the Gentiles, there shall be peace for a time among them. And after a space of time, the trees of the vineyard shall once again bring forth corrupted fruit. 14. And Zenos spoke of this land, which is a promised land unto the Nephites, and also unto the Lamanites, and unto others whom the Lord shall bring into this land. And the gospel shall be given to the people on this continent, as well as it was given unto the Jews at Jerusalem. 15. And there shall be all manner of trees throughout the vineyard of the Lord. In other words, there shall be many people upon all the continents of the world that shall hear the gospel of the Son of God, 
and repent of their sins. And there shall be many churches that shall claim to be the pure olive tree that the Lord grew in his vineyard. 16. And in the latter days before God once again sendeth his Son among the people, yea, even in all his glory like unto the glory that he showed unto the Nephites and the Lamanites in the land of Bountiful, God shall once again bring the knowledge of his gospel unto the Gentiles, and then unto the Jews, that the last may be first, and the first may be last. 17. And it shall come to pass that the gospel shall be established in all parts of the world. In other words, the Lord shall graft in the wild branches into the natural olive trees, and the natural branches into the wild trees, that he might once again obtain fruit that is pleasing unto him. 18. And after this gospel shall be preached in all the parts of the world, yea, even after the voice of Jesus Christ shall be heard among all men, then still shall the Lord of the vineyard weep, and say unto his servants, What could I have done more for my vineyard? 19. For behold, all the trees of the vineyard shall be corrupt, and the Lord shall ask of his servants, What was the cause of the corruptness of his vineyard? 20. Then shall the servant of the Lord say unto his master, Is it not the loftiness of thy vineyard? Have not the branches thereof overcome the roots which are good? And because the branches have overcome the roots thereof, behold, they grow faster than the strength of the roots, taking strength unto themselves. 21. And it came to pass that Zenos expounded the meaning of the parable unto the high priests, saying, Behold, in the latter days the church of God shall be like unto this church at Jerusalem. For the Lord will give unto them the pureness of his everlasting gospel, and provide for them a way whereby they might be saved in the kingdom of God at the last day. 22. Nevertheless, because of the branches, or in other words, because of the church of God and its supposed greatness, the roots of the tree, which is the pure gospel of God, shall be overcome. The leaders and members of the church of God shall become lofty and prideful, and their desire shall be towards the church and not set upon the gospel, which is the root of the tree, thus the branches overcoming the roots that are good. 23. And they shall be like unto you, and also like unto those who will be at Jerusalem when God sendeth his Son among them. For behold, they shall not understand the gospel that the Son of God shall preach unto them. And because of the examples of the leaders of the church of God, the people shall harden their hearts towards the gospel, and turn their hearts towards the church for their salvation, thus denying the power of the Holy Spirit and its righteousness. 24. And their hearts and their minds shall be set upon the things of this world, and the honours and glories of men. Then shall the words of Isaiah again be fulfilled among them, when he spoke unto the house of Israel, saying, 25. Woe unto the wicked, for it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. 26. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. 27. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. 28. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. 29. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces, and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts? 30. Moreover the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes, walking, and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. 31. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their private parts. 32. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their coals, and their round tires like the moon. 33. The chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers. 
34. The bonnet and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings. 35. The rings and nose jewels. 36. The changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins. 37. The glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. 38. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle a rent, and instead of a well-set hair boldness, and instead of a stomacher a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. 39. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. 40. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. 41. And it came to pass that Zenos continued his prophecies in front of the high priests, and he prophesied concerning the second coming of the Son of God, even when he shall appear in his power, and his glory to prune his vineyard for the last time. 42. And the Lord shall once again set his hand for the last time to prune his vineyard, and attempt to bring forth good fruit from the trees thereof. 43. And he shall call his servants to work at his side, and he will allow the good and the bad to continue to grow together. Nevertheless, he shall clear away the bad as the good groweth, making sure that the branches will never again overrun the strength of the roots. 44. And it shall come to pass that the trees of his vineyard shall once again bring forth good fruit for the space of many seasons. And when evil fruit shall once again come into the vineyard, then will the Lord cause to be gathered all of the fruits of his trees, and the good he shall preserve unto himself, and the bad he will cast away in his own place. And then the end of the world shall come, and the Lord will cause his vineyard to be burned with fire, and all these things according to the parable and prophecy of Zenos. 45. And it came to pass that after Zenos had testified of the end of the world and the destruction of the wicked, Laban, the chief high priest, stood forth and commanded that Zenos be struck down for his blasphemy against the church of God. For behold, Laban denied that the church of God was corrupt and that the leaders thereof were misleading the people. And Laban stood forth and testified of the righteousness of the church and its leaders. 45. And upon his command one of the guards who carried Zenok and Zenos into the chamber of the high priests put forth his sword to silence Zenos. 47. And Lehi sprang forth from his seat, which was set high above the assembly of the people, and was among those of the other high priests. And Lehi stood between the sword of the guard and Zenos. 48. And Lehi pleaded with the other high priests that no harm should come to these two prophets of God. And he pleaded unto them, saying, What cause have we against these two men? Do they not speak the truth concerning us? Do they not speak unto us of our iniquities and corruption? Know we not that they have been sent by God to preach repentance unto us, that we might not experience the pain and anguish of the wrath of God because of our sins? 49. Behold, my soul hath been burdened much because of the ways of this church, and those things which we teach unto the people. And have we not set ourselves up above the people, even so much that when we walk by them on the street or in the synagogue that they do worship us, and bow down before us? How can we not see that these things are an abomination before God, and that we are misleading this people to trust more in the church and its leaders than in the gospel that we are supposed to be teaching unto them? 50. And have we not taken the money that hath been given to the church because of the commandment of the Lord regarding the tithing of his people? And have we not used this money to build great synagogues and great temples, yet we suffer that there remain the poor and needy among us? 
Does this not bear testimony that we do love our money and our substance and our fine apparel and the adorning of our churches more than we love the poor and the needy, the sick and the afflicted? 51. And in our solemn assemblies do we not justify our actions and doings because of the praise of the world? Do we not make concessions to the word of God because we believe that we will be mocked and ridiculed by the pride and ignorance of the world? In fine, do we not change the precepts and doctrines of God and even the pure ordinances that were given unto us by the prophet Moses? Do we not change them to suit our whims and satisfy the desires of the world that we may be accepted by it? 52. Behold, my soul is racked with anguish, because I know that these things are true, and I also know that these two men are prophets of God, who have been sent unto this church to bring us unto repentance, so that we might not be destroyed. 53. And it came to pass that Lehi did have success with some of the other high priests who were present in the chambers and also with many of the people who attended the inquisition of Zenos and Zenoch. 54. Nevertheless, Laban, who was the chief high priest, did stand forth to confound Lehi, and he commanded that Lehi shall be bound also, and judged for his testimony against the church of God and its leaders. 55. But Lehi was beloved by the people, and there were none who wanted to see him cast out from among them. 56. And there was another high priest who knew that the things that Lehi had spoken were true, and his name was Ishmael, and he had for a long time known Lehi and his family, and they were friends who had shared many times together, united with their families. But Ishmael dared not to say anything in the defense of Lehi, for Ishmael feared Laban. 57. And it was Laban who also had the loyalty and the trust of the captain of the guard, and the soldiers who were assigned to administer the law in that part of the land of Israel. 58. And it came to pass that Lehi could see the hardness of the heart of Laban, and he also could see that the people began to be swayed by the words of Laban. 59. And Lehi left the chamber, and went out into the street, and knelt down, and prayed unto the Lord in behalf of his people. And he prayed with all the energy of his soul, yea, even with all of his heart, for great was his anguish for the sins of the people. End of chapter 2